FC Edmonton Soccer on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the Fath Group, building Alberta for more than 50 years. By High Signs, let's light it up. And by Earthwater, the official water of FC Edmonton. Welcome back to Clark Stadium. FC Edmonton kicking off a big week for the beautiful game in Alberta this week. Team Canada playing on Tuesday night, their first game in the province for about eight years. FC Edmonton against Fort Lauderdale today. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Cap City Landscaping. The grass is greener. Starting 11 for FC Edmonton. Parker in goal playing really well at the moment. Back in the team for the first time. The big story today, Captain Albert Watson and Hlaverty dropping out with a concussion. Yeah, and that will put David Proctor moving him out. He's listed as a D, but he's actually going to play that holding midfield. He's going to play a central role along with Chris Nurse, and they'll be key in controlling the, the strikers. Fort Lauderdale, not with their strongest starting 11, but hoping for a good reaction from some of the players given a chance today to stake a claim for their spot. Obviously, the, the big thing for the strikers is Walter Restrepo, Dave Foley, Mark Anderson, all left at home, not available today. They're getting ready for US Open Cup on Tuesday. This is a very weak inside. The only highlight really there is Jeff Atanella, one of the top keepers in NASL the last couple of years, went up to Real Salt Lake this year. He's just come back to NASL on loan, and this is one of the best keepers in the league, and now he's back. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that matchup works. FC Edmonton will be defending the goal to our left, playing all in white. Fort Lauderdale kicking off the first half of action. Some of the fans still arriving at the stadium, Clark Stadium. Many uh, like to uh, hang around outside the stadium in the parking lots just before the game. Sheena Dixon about to get us underway on the pitch. And FC Edmonton have been playing pretty well here at home and scoring goals as well. Three the last time out against the top of the table Atlanta two for Michael Cox who was named player of the week in the NASL after that game one of the best players on show in that 3-0 victory though was Chris Nurse and he starts uh, very well again with a biting tackle in the midfield and that's where he's given FC Edmonton a bit of an extra dimension this year and the fans really impressed with the fullbacks too and here's Lang on the ball and his charging runs down that left hand side have been uh, really good to watch for the home side this season. Cox there penalized after linking up with Seiko, an early handball for him. Yeah, that was a fairly obvious handball. Looked like he was uh, putting a basketball down there for a second, the way that uh, the hand moved the ball there. Fairly easy call for the referee. Really a big opportunity for Edmonton, uh, not to disrespect the, the lineup that, that the strikers have put out there, understanding that they're playing three games in six days and they have cut commitments, but uh, really, this is a huge opportunity for Edmonton to move up the standings and really stake a claim for that spring season title today. Colin Miller been talking this week in spite of the fact that he knew that it was a possible rotation of the strikers squad. He wants his team to be ruthless, treat this like any other game. And here's Cox running at the defense in the early stages. Robert Garrett sidesteps the defender. Garrett down that right wing. He has support from Edward. He's also a fullback that likes to get forward and he's created some goals and some chances for FC Edmonton in the early going this season. Proctor getting a touch, a run out in midfield today and good burst of energy from David Proctor winning a throw in on the right hand side. And he has played that role in Scotland before. It's not a, a totally unfamiliar position for David Proctor to be playing. And uh, really, uh, this is not not really an out of sorts uh, situation for an experienced player like him to be in. If there's anyone who can deal with that in this lineup, it's David. Edward with a cross that he whipped into the near post. Wasn't a bad idea there, but Atanella, very safe hands from him. And recently as well, he was also named in the NASL Team of the Week. So Atanella gets his first touch of the ball. And two very strong keepers on show. Even in the 3-0 win against Atlanta, Parker made a couple of highlight reel saves for the Eddies. Yeah, one right at the end of the game, a uh, double save really. And a couple early on in the, in the match where he came out and challenged well, when Atlanta actually had a good possession of the ball in the first 20 minutes of the game. Uh, Sila on the left-hand side, trying to get something moving for the strikers. Got Salazar with him, and here is Carlos Salazar. Left-footed ball that uh, is headed away by Watson. That's the captain's first touch. Always a few nerves coming back from an injury, especially one as serious as the knee injury that he had, the medial collateral ligament 
but a good uh, dominant first touch with the header there. Seiko putting pressure on the edge of the box and uh, just didn't quite break for him, but Proctor has the ball back and here's Watson again in his own half, gets things moving and finds Edward very quickly. And if there's one thing that Edmonton suffered in their two home wins while they were successful, it was slow starts to the game. And it looks here that Colin Miller has them pressing early. He wants them on the ball, pressure on the ball. We saw that there with Sean Seiko catching the defender sitting on the ball not watching and this is what i think that colin will want out of his team early a lot of early pressure a lot of just not giving fort lauderdale space carlisle mitchell coming off uh, to cover defensively that right back spot edward had charged up the pitch nurse winning the ball back that one's going to go out for a corner kick good pressure from fort lauderdale but nurse knew what he was doing with the tackle and uh, concedes the corner and this is a situation where FC Edmonton did give up a couple of chances from set pieces in the last game that Colin Miller wasn't happy about. No, he wasn't. But still, the, the way that this team has firmed up over the, over the year from last year, where set pieces were something that had the fans biting their nails at every moment, uh, has been a market improvement here. And that's a very nice catch for Lance Parker. Pretty routine for him and a good uh, roll out to find Cox. Cox has been causing defense's problems with his pace this season and Colin Mill has been impressed with his work rate and that it's not just been the goals but that he's been actually a real handful. And it's got to be in the players' heads. They know that there could be players uh, in the next couple of days in, in Canada camp who get hurt, who may, may not be available to go. We've already had a couple of injuries in the Canada camp, uh, who players who can't make it. Uh, and they know now at this stage, if there's call-ups, they're going to come from FC Edmonton uh, to, to get players uh, from Europe or to, from other parts of the country now, get a little bit tricky. So they're here. They have a chance to impress the national team coach one last time, who's also their club coach. Board Lauderdale pressing down the right-hand side, looking for the early cutback. No nonsense defending there from Albert Watson. Puts that one into the stands recently built. And uh, the fans taking advantage of the new stands on that far side of the stadium and still uh, arriving at the game, some of the latecomers. No goals so far after five minutes. Heck of a lot of road construction happening just outside the stadium. It really slows down the traffic coming into this uh, facility right now. A little bit of rain uh, across the province of Alberta the last couple of days, which has been good news for firefighters against the forest fires. Uh, but. Nice weather today for the fans to come out for this one. You know, I talked a little bit about Fort Lauderdale and the lineup that they've brought, but I, I'm sure the coaches will tell you that this is a chance for players on, on the squad, squad depth guys to, 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 this is their audition. This is their chance to impress the coach and show that why they should be getting starter minutes. And it's a, it's a big moment for them. So this is, this is uh, not necessarily a, a team that you can say you can be complacent about. Lance Parker gathering that one in nicely as Gonzalo Di Mahuca just ran that one down looking for the rebound and Lang pushing that one forward to Seiko. A bit of a misunderstanding between them but Nurse tackling back and winning the ball well again. This time Seiko goes past his man, doesn't get the decision though. That will be a throw in for the strikers. Their last game out was a victory, their first one of the season as far as uh, league play goes. So just one win and down there at the bottom of the table, they'll be hoping to build on that, but a grueling schedule. They arrive here in the middle of. And, and certainly a big moment for this club to be uh, playing FC Dallas on Tuesday in, in a cup game. And uh, you certainly want to show well for your fans. Anytime an NASL team plays an MLS team, uh, everyone in this league wants the NASL teams to do well. So this is uh, an understandable decision by Daryl Shore to rotate the squad as much as he has today because really that's a big showpiece for the club, a big showpiece for the franchise, and a big showpiece for the league. Atanella striking this one through the middle, and Mitchell wins a good header. Drops for Fort Lauderdale in the midfield. Trying to get it out wide for Arcila. Good break forward there by Ramos, and uh, takes a sliding tackle by Edward to win that one back. But a chance for Arcila from this left-hand side for the cutback. That one has just drifted over the top of the crossbar. 
And that will be a goal kick for Lance Park. Even if that ball had dropped in the box, there wasn't really anyone there. There were two players at the top of the box, but none really in a dangerous position. There were four eddies in the box there. Things were well marked. It would have been uh, uh, really something uh, for a bounce or something to carry that to one of the attackers. They need to support that run better. Uh, player coming in to make the cross and really no one there to make themselves available uh, to be on the end of that. So really not much of a matter that ball goes into touch. There's Parker's goal kick. Cox challenging for it. Drops for Gonzalez for the strikers, but Wang Gets it back, and here's Nurse on the left-hand side. He's got four dice ahead of him. Along the deck to Cox. It's pretty passing from FC Edmonton. The flag's up, but uh, that was a nice movement forward from the Eddies. Just a couple of steps too slow there. Uh, Michael Cox had to make that extra step on the turn to slide that ball to Chris Nurse, and by that time, uh, Chris was behind the lines there, uh, which are easier for the linesmen to detect because of the football lines. And... Uh, uh, and then that put the playoff side, that extra step there that Michael Cox had to take in turning and passing that ball to Chris Nurse. If he could have made that one touch, that could have been close uh, to sending Chris Nurse free. Already FC Edmonton having some joy down both flanks and Colin Miller with some encouraging words from the touchline. Edward on the chest, he's got support from Albert Watson. Wearing the captain's armband. Took him a while to make his debut, but here he is, happy to be back playing. A little bit concerned about his match sharpness. He's fit enough, he says, but there's nothing that can really prepare you for the nature of a 90-minute match, and we'll see how uh, he does as the game progresses today. What he needs is just that first challenge, that first tough challenge, uh, a one-on-one -on -one battle or something, to see how he's going to see that the knee holds up fine, that he's going to feel okay. That's what a defender needs, is to, to, to get physical and uh, to know that you're going to be fine and uh, just to really get that rust off. Nothing, nothing like a good challenge to, to, get, to get that out of the way. There is Albert Watson. He has Carlisle Mitchell alongside him. Mitchell... Slotted coolly into this uh, FC Edmonton back four and finds Lang on that flank. Seiko gets a touch, rolls it back for Mitchell. He's going to try and switch play to the right wing and Garrett gets his head on it. And he's done well, Robert Garrett. Breaks into the penalty area there. Good effort from FC Edmonton again, looking to make things happen. They've got a throw in. And Garrett tries to... Sneak around the outside of his marker on that occasion, but there's no joy that time, and it's a goal kick for Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, it was uh, well done by Garrett, because I think he gives up uh, quite a bit of height there to Daniel Arcilla uh, when they had that battle there for that long switch uh, ball from Carlisle Mitchell, but uh, Garrett does well. He's a, he's a player that's known to, to not give up and get stuck in. He's actually created a couple of goals this year on sort of hopeless balls that you would think down the wing you're not going to get to and he stayed on it and won balls and actually created goals. Parker again gathering a loose through ball for strikers Salazar trying to play in his teammate didn't quite work out and it's Lance Parker again in possession. It's a long kick from Parker just to the edge of the penalty area. Cox is beaten in the air but Proctor Gets ahead on it, and Lang is able to control it. Early cross for Lang, and those have been dangerous in a couple of games this season, but that one's very well anticipated by Jeff Atanella. Yeah, you know, I'm uh, noticing a few Bayern Munich shirts in the crowd today. I wonder why that is, uh, but I've seen a few show up today. Funny how uh, teams uh, find fans when they win some championships. Some new shirts, I think they've been bought in the last day or so at the sports stores. Of course, Bayern, the European champions again, beating Borussia Dortmund yesterday at Wembley. Fantastic game. Fantastic advertisement for the game that was. And a fantastic advertisement for the German game. And uh, I think we were talking before the, the match, people talk about England and Spain, they have to put Germany in that, uh, in that discussion now. And if they don't, they're, they're not doing justice to the quality of football. Lots of people here looking forward to the game on Tuesday night as well, and a lot of the uh, Team Canada players are in the crowd today. It's Costa Rica at Commonwealth Stadium. Good pressure on the edge of the box again from FC Edmonton, but the strikers scrambling it away nicely to the right-hand side. A good response and a good break forward 
by Dimitrov. Just uh, couldn't get the touch on that one. And another goal kick to Parker. Van Collen has been doing double duty. He's been doing national team training in the morning or in the afternoon, FC Edmonton training. He's been doing both, uh, really making it work on both ends. Uh, the national team started showing up here on Friday, had a practice right after Edmonton's, uh, Edmonton's practice. So really uh, trying to make that work and uh, really relishing the opportunity and, and the permission that he's got from this club to represent country as well. And Colin with more than 60 caps as a national team player throughout the, the late 80s, early 90s. And he was on the squad for the 86 World Cup, so a uh, player with uh, deep passion for the, for the red jersey. No goals so far at Clark Stadium. Free kick for the strikers here. Left footed is drilled in low and it's headed away by Nurse. This one's lifted over the top, but that will be dealt with by Watson and Proctor. Fordyce trying to win that ball back just inside the striker's half. Cox gets a tackle in, but that's a little bit late for the referee's liking. Free kick to the visitors. The game really hasn't picked up a real flow yet. There's a lot of uh, stops and starts, not really anyone finding themselves in the game. But, but really, considering the slow starts Edmonton's had to the previous home games, this might be something that they'll take because uh, they did give up some early scoring chances in both of those matches. Even though they won those games and got clean sheets in those games, uh, the coach wasn't necessarily happy with uh, the team's performance, especially early in the game. Fort Lauderdale trying to make something happen. There goes the through ball and Parker stands up very big to deny Osman Ramos, who did everything right, got the shot on target, but Parker blocked that one terrifically well. Might be tested again here, and he comes out and punches that one and gets good distance on it. And Carlisle Mitchell is hurt behind. Uh, he rolled out, uh, rolled behind the touchline behind Lance Parker. He's uh, calling for help, and he's clutching his ankle. After that Ramos chance, he was staggering. I didn't see the play. Already a call for a substitution, I think, from Lance Parker here. He's uh, put, the, put the fingers. He's... Uh, Mitchell looking in a fair bit of pain. There's the... Point blank range saved by Parker, and it looked like uh, that's where Mitchell just maybe fell and turned his ankle. Yeah, it didn't look like much of anything, no contact. But obviously, the coaches from coaching staff from two teams with their hearts in their throat uh, when uh, Carlisle Mitchell goes down like that because he's here on loan from the Vancouver Whitecaps. He was actually with the Whitecaps last week on an emergency recall uh, because they were short a little bit in the back through their injury issues. So. You know, this isn't just Colin Miller that and 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 then the Edmonton staff were concerned when they see Carlisle Mitchell go down. It will also be Bob Leonard Doozy and Martin Rennie in the Vancouver Whitecaps staff who will also be very very concerned when they see uh, Carlisle Mitchell being attended to. Currently, just with ten men on the pitch, while Mitchell gets treatment off it, but Proctor, who's been everywhere in the first 16 minutes, makes a good header away from the penalty area. Strikers trying to hit the eddies while they're a man down, but that one will be easily picked up by Lance Parker. And with Mitchell there, you wonder, it, it was non-contact. He looked like he was just getting set as, as Ramos was uh, going in on Parker in case that ball gets by to maybe make a block on the goal line and uh, just went down. You wonder, maybe his ankle caught a seam in the turf or uh, where those lines are sewn in to the turf and, uh, and slipped awkwardly. But he was—he called for help, right? He was waving, and he actually rolled out in out of bounds. Uh, he rolled behind the goal line there. So, uh, you know, we hope he's okay. He's uh, he's hobbling now, but he's up on his feet. Looks like in the dugout they're getting Adrian Leroy ready to come on. He's uh, just getting the kit on and in conversation with Colin Miller as Mitchell continues to get treatment behind that goal. He tried to walk it off, he went back down, and now the trainer has called for the sub. So this is a, a worrying moment for FC Edmonton that Carlo Mitchell was only able to last about 17 minutes and is going to have to go out for what's a, a non-contact injury. And we've seen in the past sometimes, uh, unfortunately, those non-contact ones are the ones that end up being the ones that are a problem. Arcila chips it across. Some dangerous movement up front by the strikers. Daryl Shaw will be pleased with the effort of his team 
but Dimitrov just not able to get on the end of that one. And it's a goal kick for Parker. I'm hoping to get Leroy on as soon as possible here. Yeah, and uh, here he is. He's uh, ready as uh, we can see Mitchell's now being just helped off by uh, the trainers. Uh, and again, he's, he's having a problem getting off the pitch and he's just hobbling. Uh, you, you really feel for him in this situation. He's trying to, to, to make it to the, to the dressing room on his own power, but he's really struggling with that. Seiko takes that one on the chest, flicks it on towards Cox, not able to get there. Garrett chasing this one down. All the way back to Jeff Atanella, who plays it coolly to Antonievich. Edmonton's already got Neil Halavity out with a concussion, so they can ill afford to have uh, injuries pile up. Just coming off their bye week, too, that's always the unfortunate thing. That's when you're supposed to get healthy, not supposed to have um, more injury problems crop up. Well, now the substitution can take place. Mitchell trying to walk off around the side of the pitch, and Leroy will go into that central defensive role. And this is uh, Adrian had been starting fairly regularly uh, with Carlisle Mitchell as Albert Watson was coming back from injury. So uh, this is not an unfamiliar spot for Adrian Leroy to be put right back out there. Canadian defender from the Ottawa area, played with the Ottawa Fury, played with the Harrisburg City, and uh, was a former Eddie who was brought back to the Eddies. He was an Eddie in 2011, uh, was uh, cut by the team, went to Harrisburg City in the USL, played there last year, and uh, came back and uh, won his job back. And his first touch of the ball is a good uh, run back to cover off that pass in defense and gets rid of the danger there. And, and Leroy's story is a sign for all professional players that, you know, this is a tough business, but it's not personal. And that you can get cut by a team and you can, you can make it back. You, you, you can do something to, to impress new coach, new brass, but same franchise. And, and, and as long as you do things with class, as long as you conduct yourself professionally, you'll always get a chance to re maybe reopen that door. Uh, and in the case of Adrian, that's what he did. A player who was cut by this team in 2011, fought his way back, showed that he deserved to be here, and he's back with the club. This time it's Edward that goes up. His header goes straight up in the air, but he wins it again. And there's four dice, touching it down for Proctor. One back by the strikers and looking for Dimitrov again. He's going to switch play to Arcila, the left-hand side. Good passing by the strikers, and Salazar again. Finding Ramos on the edge of the penalty area, but dispossessed by Edward, and perhaps a chance of a counter-attack for the Eddies with Lang in possession. Got four dice ahead of him, and now Cox. Cox! Just might get in behind the defense there. There's a last-ditch tackle. Garrett, perhaps with a shooting or crossing chance, gets into the penalty area. Referee's uh, waving that one away. And Watson sees it into touch. A throw in for Fort Lauderdale. Thought that was really good defending by Antoni Avic there. Uh, getting his shoulder into Robert Garrett's body and, and pushing him over. I know fans love to see that when the push happens, that they think that's going to be a penalty. But to me, that's just good, solid defending and holding your ground and just not allowing that space. The defender has a right to space as well. Uh, Antoni Evich held that space and uh, wouldn't allow Garrett to, to get through him. And, and yes, they go shoulder, shoulder to chest there, but that's fine. And that's uh, totally within the laws of the game. There is Antoni Evich. Picks out Salazar again. Some confident passing from the strikers. Ramos choosing to switch flanks, and Guillaume helps it on. Early cross into the penalty area, and Watson gets a left foot to it, and it flies out for a corner kick. Fort Lauderdale's had some decent runs up the wing the last couple of minutes. Uh, we saw that chance with... Uh, Ramos uh, a few minutes ago just before uh, or just as Mitchell was getting uh, hurt 
but uh, they've been able to, uh, to, to to get some joy here on, on, on the wings, and Edmonton's going to have to limit that. Fullback play has been an improvement on uh, Edmonton's part from this year over last, but uh, if there's anywhere Fort Lauderdale is having success right now, it's on the outside. Ramos is corner, and it's very well defended by Nurse. Garrett on the edge of the penalty area doesn't get the most convincing touch and there's the strike towards goal an easy save in the end for Parker who releases Lang on the flank the coach still won't be happy that a ball got loose there at the top of the box there for a Fort Lauderdale player to uh, to have a shot at goal uh, yes didn't didn't get a good purchase on it but you, you really are unhappy that your defenders aren't just getting that ball out of danger and controlling that ball Garrett chips up the cross to the far post. Guillaume, not very convincing in defense there, but Seiko just wouldn't drop for him. And Edmonton's had some good pressure early in the match. In the first few minutes, they're really pressing the ball well, but really that doesn't seem to be existing right now. Uh, game is really being played at a, at a very slow pace right now. And uh, I think Edmonton being the home team here, knowing the kind of uh, travel schedule that Fort Lauderdale's had to deal with, and yes, they did leave some players at home, but they need to, to push the tempo. They need to force this game on Fort Lauderdale, force Fort Lauderdale to run, force Fort Lauderdale to defend. And they need to, to, to do that by just putting some simple passes together and penetrating, use the wings more. Chance here, Fordyce edge of the area just runs into traffic. And honestly, Daryl had no help there. He, he was around five Fort Lauderdale players, and there's no one there making themselves available. Not the best header back by Leroy, and does Parker get a touch? And there is a penalty kick awarded to Fort Lauderdale, and Parker is in big trouble. A red card. And it all starts off with a poor defensive decision by Adrian Leroy there heads that ball back and he puts his goaltender in a heck of a lot of trouble and uh, you, you have a, an attacker on your back it's it's a poor poor decision by Adrian Leroy uh, and uh, I know Parker will be claiming there that uh, that the attacker there Dimitrov made the most of it but uh, you know the shoulder goes into his body uh, he's around the keeper and because he's around the keeper the benefit of the doubt is going to go the way of uh, of the striker uh, and of the striker striker, I guess I can say, but it's all set up here by a poor poor decision by Adrian Leroy to try to head that back to the keeper, and uh, you know we saw a keeper sent off from Atlanta last time, and ironically last year when Edmonton beat Fort Lauderdale here in, in at Clark Stadium, they did it when they were only at 10 men. And so now the game has really turned in a game that looked like it had all of the, the hallmarks of going Edmonton's way has all of a sudden really switched on this team. And it all starts with a you know one poor play can, can turn a team's fortune. And, and Lance Parker not only will miss the rest of this game, leaves it, he will not be available for next week's game against Tampa Bay because he'll have to serve a suspension. So it all comes with one poor clearance. Well, Lance Parker has been one of the most consistent players on the Edmonton team. He's gonna be taking an early bath today. Proctor is gonna be substituted for Smith to come on as the replacement goalkeeper. But this means that uh, Edmonton will be a man short for over an hour. And again, that's another victim of this, is that David Proctor, who has actually maybe been one of the, the best Eddies out there. We talked about how he was all over the pitch, and, then, and he has to sacrifice himself for the sub for the keeper. And now with Mitchell's injury, that's two players gone. And, uh, you know, you can say to yourself, if Mitchell doesn't get hurt, maybe he's not in position. Leroy, the sub, comes and makes the mistake. But now, two subs are burned, not a lot of flexibility for the, for the Eddies. And it looks like uh, Dimitrov, the player who was fouled, will be the one who can convert the chance. Well, the first thing that Smith has to do is to try and save a penalty kick. And Dimitrov is the kicker. Smith takes his spot. 
Oh, and he saved it. John Smith, a dramatic entrance into the match. Just kicked it away with a trailing boot. Not the best penalty kick, but he made the stop. Uh, uh, I wouldn't even use the word not the best. This is a absolutely awful penalty kick straight up the middle and and that really you, you, is that a striker taking that penalty kick or is that a, a defender because you you really have to say i mean he cushions that ball he's trying to just guide that down the middle and it, smith is guessing to his right but he still is able to get his feet on that ball and get a strong enough feet to a very weak shot and you know, really a mirror image of a game here last year where Edmonton went down to 10 men and Lance Parker saved the penalty. Edmonton went on to win that game. And at the other end, there's Cox with a header and he makes Antonella make the save. Garrett with the cross and a good response from FC Edmonton. But it, was, it, it felt like a nervous penalty take. It felt like someone who had, had walked up to the spot and was, was very nervous about about that situation because it, just trying to guide that ball down the middle there was no power in it uh no no real placement to it and and really uh if there is such thing as an easy penalty save seiko breaking in from the left hand side sean seiko just puts it wide of the post the flag stayed down the defense puzzled that the flag didn't go up but in the end that through ball beautifully taken into stride by Seiko. We've seen him curl those in many times. He just didn't get the bend on this occasion. Again, it might be this. The, I've talked about this in previous broadcasts. Players have complained about the ball this year. Uh, the ball is very hard, very hard to get bend on this ball this year. For some reason, uh, a lot of players have, have, have voiced their concerns all the way to league office about the, the that this ball is like hitting a rock and that... Uh, it's not just just hard to play with, but it's hard to get any real spin on it, and uh, it's hard it's hard to bend uh, bend shots, bend free kicks, and we're not using it as an excuse there, but uh, uh, that that's a case where Sean Singer that ball just doesn't bend for him at all. It just stayed straight. The best chance for the Eddies so far, following the best chance for Ford Lauderdale, a penalty kick squandered by Dimitrov and saved by John Smith, still goalless with about half an hour played. FC Edmonton having to rejig things around after Parker's sending off. And now they've lost Proctor, playing a man short for the rest of this match. And uh, not, not saying that, uh, that uh, this, might, this may happen because there's still a lot, of, a lot of game time left, but if somehow Edmonton was able to scratch a result out of this, being down 10 men, I would think that uh, Adrian Leroy owes uh, John Smith a, a healthy thank you. He might also owe Stefan Dimitrov a healthy thank you for the way he took the penalty, but uh, what a confidence builder for the keeper. Come into the game and save a penalty uh, with, with your first touch of the game. So, you know, John Smith played a lot last year for Edmonton. It uh, was almost a 1A, 1B situation with him and Lance Parker. A uh, lot of confidence in him. Uh, they don't really feel they lose a lot when John Smith, uh, the, the Toronto keeper, goes in. Lance's free kick is over hit badly and goes over the top. And those are the kinds of situations with a man down. FC Edmonton will really want to try to create opportunities, those set pieces on the edge of the area, but that one not working out. And Fort Lauderdale with a man advantage, knocking the ball around the back. Cox is going to chase that down and put some pressure on Atanella. And with Cox's pace, that kind of back pass is always going to be dangerous. Nurse made a good break here to the left-hand side. Jeff Atnell there got very lucky. He was actually looking at one of the other fullbacks. I think he was already preparing to make that pass as that ball was coming back, and he didn't see that Michael Cox was bearing down on him. And he just saw that the last second. Uh, if he hadn't, if he not picked up his head, uh, Cox would have been gone and around him. Asila. Uh, seen a lot of the ball on this left-hand side. He's drilled this cross low, and Leroy this time gets a dominant header away from the danger zone it was his mistake that led to Parker conceding the penalty Edward forcing a throw in for FC Edmonton first goal is going to be crucial now it's a good long throw by Edward and Cox has done very well to battle for it and volleys a pass to Garrett who tries to send away Cox down the right-hand side he's gonna be penalized for a push there 
free kick to Fort Lauderdale. Now at Edmonton had a, had a couple of decent runs up the pitch there. We had a Cox header. We had Seiko's chance that went wide. Uh, you know, I, I certainly doesn't feel like Edmonton's sitting back uh, and trying to soak up pressure. It looks like they're still trying to activate players, still trying to get players downfield and put pressure on the strikers. Uh, Sela breaking into the penalty area. That's a really clean challenge inside the box by Garrett. Referee was on the spot to wave away any possible potential penalty appeals. He had to make that one a clean tackle, and he did. It yeah, absolutely was a clean tackle, and absolutely no complaint from the strikers player. So. Uh, all ball, wonderful challenge from Robert Garrett, and I talked earlier about a challenge that uh, that, that uh, he fell under in, in the Fort Lauderdale box, and I think credit in both those cases where no one went to the official and, and suggested any hint of penalty. Uh, the players understand what a clean tackle is, and it's, uh, it's, it's well played in the good spirit of the game. Fordyce touching that throw in on, and in the end it'll uh, ricochet out for another throw to Edward. Fordyce, nice flick this time. It doesn't work for Cox, but Nurse picks out Lang, who's got lots of space to attack on that left-hand side. Early cross again to the far post, just a little long, and a goal kick to Fort Lauderdale. Ball just carried and carried on Lance there, who's usually much better with his delivery. Uh, his, uh, his crossing is normally uh, excellent, and it has been for most of this year. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's got a little bit of... Uh, Maybe a little bit of excitement, a little bit of energy with uh, with this changes of situation in the game with Edmonton being down 10 men, and maybe you're thinking that this might be one of the few chances you get. Leroy shepherding that one through for Smiths. A good understanding between them there. No need to head it, and Smiths was right on the spot to claim it. Looks for Cox from his clearance. Drop in the midfield. Or nurse, but the ball scrambled over the top, which Smiths again will gather on the edge of his penalty area. Edward looking for a one two with Garrett, gave Garrett a lot to do, and in the end, he did well to keep that ball in play. But the strikers have released Salazar, who's got round the back on the left hand side, a good cut back into the penalty box, but uh, the referee spotting an infringement there. And a free kick to Edmonton. I think the ball hits Dimitrov on the arm as it's coming down. As that's coming down, uh, I think it's one of those situations too where Dimitrov has a defender like Leroy standing in front of him, and the ball's just going to pop over Leroy. He doesn't see it coming, and it hits him in the arm. So uh, it's a chance where it creates a scoring chance where the referee's going to stop that play because it does create a real unfair advantage for the striker in that situation. About oh, ten minutes to half time, no goals so far, but the Clark Stadium crowd trying to encourage FC Edmonton. On this attack here as Garrett chases down Nurse's long diagonal through ball. Now Edward, an early cross from the wing. That could be a chance for Cox, who gets the challenge in on Atanella. Very good claim by the goalkeeper. A ball that Cox really had to go far. But uh, Atanella and Cox shaking hands at the end of it. The goalkeeper probably feeling like he should have had a free kick. He looked over to the linesman. But that was one that Cox uh, definitely had to go for. Oh yeah, it was really it was almost a 50-50 ball, and it's at that that terrible height for a keeper where it's uh, hip high, where you have to get low, and you know if a striker's coming in, they're gonna they're gonna hit you full on, and uh, that's what happened there. Nothing dirty about that play; it's just part of the game. But that was a danger of uh, of that low cross, and uh, something that can be very very effective when done well. Tackle by Leroy there, closing down the space for the strikers and Watson who's had a good steady first half he'll be pleased with that it's another touch Seiko moving in from the left hand side two men on him and Fort Lauderdale have done their homework there they've really uh, cut down the space that Sean Seiko likes to attack he did have one chance but uh, just missed and obviously being down at 10 men it, it, it puts a premium on that space you generally will see you'll have one less attacker coming with you. And of course, that puts the pressure a little bit on you, too. Back of mind, you're thinking, we're not going to create many chances down to 10 men. So when that chance comes, you get a bit nervous and maybe you, you rush that chance or you, you pump across too long, you get the adrenaline going, you miss time to jump because simply you're thinking, this might be the one and only chance we get. And that's where you guys got to calm down. Chances will still come when you're only down to 10 men. So a lot of time in this game, but you, you really have to 
to think things through and almost think in your head when you're attacking that you've still got 11 on the pitch. Smith's in goal for FC Edmonton, replacing the sent-off Lance Placa, and Proctor substituted so that he could come on. Nurse, great break forward. Cox takes a touch. He's got Nurse with him, edge of the area. Tries to wait the pass out to the right wing. Garrett's done well to get there. He's beaten two. Good cross to the far post. Just beats everybody. And that one will whistle all the way through and go into touch. But that's a promising attack from FC Edmonton. Yeah, we saw Garrett there just skip by a sliding challenge from Arcilla and be able to create a lot of space for himself to get that ball in. Just like the cross, again, doesn't have any bend back towards the striker. It doesn't, it doesn't swing. It just stayed on a straight plane. And uh, that's just ball's just not moving out there. And uh, it's, uh, it's hugging a straight line whenever it seems to be going off anyone's foot. Watson, another strong header from the Fort Lauderdale clearance. Strikers trying to work the ball again. Wide to the left-hand side. And Ramos picking out a nice run by Salazar. Leroy gets a challenge in on him, and that ball will deflect through for John Smith. I have to tell you, it just honestly, right now, the strikers look better when it was 11 on 11 than when they do 11 v 10. It looks like they've they've fallen victim to that idea where they're they're slowing down a bit, thinking that the man advantage is going to just work itself its own magic for them. Because I, I really thought they were more effective in their attacks and more effective in getting down the pitch when Edmonton had 11 men on the field. And I think right now they slow down a little bit. Well, you know what they always say: it's hard to play against the uh, 10 men. And that's what Colin Miller will be hoping for the remainder of this match. It's Edward trying to go around the outside here. Good cut back from Edward. He's pinged that cross in. Four dice with the strike. And it just flies over the angle. But FC Edmonton seemed to have been given a boost since they lost a man. And, and you, know, you know, we just talked about how difficult it is to play against 10 men. But Edmonton in no way is bunkering down here. Look how deep Eddie Edward gets up from the fullback position. They're still trying to activate players. They're still trying to bring players from the back to the front. And it really is a, a, a case where Edmonton hasn't changed his game plan very much, uh, being down to 10 men. And maybe that's catching Fort Lauderdale a little bit by surprise. Maybe they're expecting to see a team that was bunkering down a little more. Yes, Daryl Fordyce has dropped more into the midfield to take that hole by, by uh, Proctor. But they're still getting men forward. Seiko's getting forward. And Robert Garrett, I, I think he's done an outstanding job down the right wing for them. And has probably been the best player they've had so far in this, in this half. About five minutes to half time, still nil-nil at Clark Stadium as Watson plays the ball back for Smith. Right-footed, the clearance goes up towards Garrett. Good flick on for Cox. Referee's whistle goes, and that's going to be a Fort Lauderdale ball. Colin Miller just up from the dugout, and again, some words of advice for Michael Cox. Well intercepted by Leroy down the left-hand side. Lang comes to his help, and they concede the throw into the strikers. You just, you just wonder how long Michael Cox can go in the game. I mean, he's filling that low, lone striker role right now. He's doing a lot of running right now. And while it's about 20 Celsius right now outside, we were on the pitch before the match, and I can tell you, it's about five degrees warmer when you get onto the onto the pitch. That really reflects the heat when the sun's beating down that artificial turf. It uh, it really warms up quite a bit more than, uh, than the temperature we'd have up in the stands. Beautiful day in Edmonton today. It's nice for the fans. Many of them in short sleeves. Referee just feeling like uh, Edward was trying to steal a few yards for that throw in and orders him back. Got a good long throw, uh, Eddie Edward, and that one's flicked on nicely by Fordyce, and he'll try and link up with Cox, and they win a free kick. Fordyce on the mark in the last home game here, a spectacular diving header, and he's hoping that the goals will start to flow now. And these, these chances when you're down a man, there's, there's more emphasis placed on it when you can swing a ball, and it's gonna be Lance Lang with that left foot trying to swing this in and Edmonton trying to create a chance. Got a nice left foot on him, Lang. 
and this one's gone in towards the middle of the goal. It's defended well by Fort Lauderdale. Garrett sliding in for the tackle, but loses the throw in. It's a long ball they're trying to play in behind Leroy, but he gets a nice touch. Edward playing it square across the back four, though, and gets his defense in trouble. Dimitrov gets forced wide by another good covering run by Leroy. Fort Lauderdale just with that extra man. Keep this move going a little bit longer. Now trying the cross in from long range, and that's going to be easy for John Smith. Just calming it down, just slowing it down right now. Letting his defenders have a breather, letting his uh, team get gathered up. You're not going to try a lot of short balls now, rolling balls out when you're down a man. You're going to try to get this thing deep, try to win a header, win a first, win a second ball. About a minute and a half of this first half left, and then two minutes of injury time or stoppage time, mostly for that. Sending off of Lance Parker. Break in from the left-hand side by Nurse here. Just tried to dink that ball through for Cox. And hits the wall of the defense, but still going on the edge of the penalty area. Just doesn't drop for Seiko. And a chance for Ramos here for Fort Lauderdale. Edge of the penalty area. He went very close earlier, but was stopped by Parker. Garrett does a good job there. Chipping away at him from behind. Excellent work from Robert Garrett, comes away with the ball too. But then gives it back, just couldn't pick out Fordyce. Salazar wearing the captain's armband for Fort Lauderdale, whips in a cross which will drift out for a goal kick. Garrett did well, he paralleled the run there of uh, I believe it was Salazar. And, uh, and 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 re and just made sure to get that shoulder into him, not allow him to get around. And again, a very clean play, physical play, but nothing dirty about it. And I think Salazar looks back at the official for help, but that might be more frustration than anything else that he wasn't able to uh, to dance around Garrett. Garrett got a body position, his goal side, and just wasn't going to yield that position. And, I, and again, some more impressive play uh, from the Northern Irish international, uh, Robert Garrett. Uh, very very impressed with his work left effort in this first half. Two minutes of stoppage time now. Here's Arcila. Fordyce getting a touch on that one and Garrett able to sneak possession back for the Eddies. Tried to play in Cox. Who concedes a free kick. Colin Miller not very happy with that one. But it will be the striker's ball. Again, this game I, it really hasn't picked up a pace uh, since the sending off. Evans has had some pressure, but you know you get these lulls in the game where there's, I don't know if it's that warm outside to the players. It shouldn't be to the Fort Lauderdale players, but uh, it really feels like the game's not being being played at, at a very quick pace. Albert Watson making a rush clearance down the left-hand side, and the strikers will try and get it around the back on the right-hand side, and Smith. Defending his near post well, and we'll see that one go out for a corner. Again, Smith saving with his legs. A little bit of trickery uh, attempted there uh, by Gonzalez, looking like he's going to try to cross that, but instead decides to try to hammer one low, maybe catch the keeper coming off his post. But uh, Smith gets his legs there, makes the save. Manny Gonzalez is crossed from the right hand side, and Smith gathers it at the second attempt. There was a moment where his heart was probably in his mouth there. Yeah, the, 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 the head of the attacker and the hands of Smiths come together and uh, the ball bobbles out. But luckily for Smiths, it bobble, bounces right down to in front of him that he's able to jump onto it. Ball over the top by Garrett that Cox is chasing and real last ditch defending by Anton Nijevic to make the tackle against Michael Cox. And that's where he's very dangerous. You let him get behind you with that speed. He can be a real handful and, and that's just, a corner. And that's just simply speed forcing a corner out of a, out of nothing, really. There's a long, hopeful ball played up. Anthony Avich thinks he has control of that, then Cox is breathing down his neck, and he's forced to play that ball out, and uh, really that's just Cox's natural abilities, forcing a corner kick out of really what was nothing. 
Lang's corner. It's going to be close to the last action of this first half. He's put it up deep to the far post, and Atanella just got a touch on that one, and Salazar will complete the clearance, and that is the end of the action for the first half. FC Edmonton losing Lance Parker to a red card. Smith's first action was to try and save a penalty kick, which he did. And since then, FC Edmonton seemed to get a bit, a bit of a boost after that sending off. Yeah, it's almost like they got a goal. Or you know, when you when you take away a goal from the opponents, when you, you have a penalty save, you can feel the, them rise. You can feel the adrenaline rise from the, the FC Edmonton players, and they were able to to push back, maybe create some half chances. I wouldn't I wouldn't consider any of them a wonderful chance, but. Uh, they certainly, uh, Fort Lauderdale after the penalty and after going up a man certainly didn't look all that dangerous. And I, and I really got the feeling that, uh, that maybe they, uh, they got caught a little bit uh, with that sort of 11 versus 10 mentality. I'm sure that, the, that they'll, more will be asked of them in the second half. Let's go pitch side and hear from the Fort Lauderdale strikers coach, Daryl Shaw. Daryl, give us your reaction to the first half. Um, I thought up until the penalty we were very good and uh, we were moving the ball well, uh, playing a lot of short passes and, and moving around quickly. When we started to play a little more direct, we started losing the ball because they got some big guys in the back and that's not really the way we play. Uh, unfortunately, we missed the penalty and then after that we uh, you know, got a little disorganized and everything, but we'll go in and, and sort it out at halftime and uh, come out and hopefully put a better half together. And what's your message to the players up against 10 men? People always say it can be hard to play against 10 men. Daryl, what, what do you want well, them we, to do? We had plenty of practice because we just did it in the Open Cup for 60 minutes and uh, weren't very successful there uh, until we went to penalties. So we just got to keep our composure. We're, we're playing good soccer, and we just got to now stay organized defensively and, and not do what we did at the end of the half and give up the long ball. And then uh, uh, our chances will come. We'll, we'll create some more chances. We'll probably bring a few guys in at halftime to make a little bit of a difference. Thank you, Daryl. All right, guys, thank you. Daryl Shaw, sure, pleased with the way his team's playing, and certainly they, there has been some nice passing from Fort Lauderdale in that first half. Yeah, but I think, as, as Daryl said, most of it came before the penalty kick. I thought they were able to get wide. I thought they were able to do some, some nice things. And, uh, but I thought after the penalty, when actually when Edmonton went down to 10 men, Edmonton got better. And Fort Lauderdale, I don't know if it's that whole, as I said, complacency, but they, their game slipped. So it seemed like it was the other way around in terms of who had the man advantage. That's here from Coach Colin Miller. Steve. Uh, first, Coach, maybe, maybe just talk about the emotions uh, running through the whole uh, red card and penalty kick. Well, I haven't seen the, the uh, decision. I've certainly heard enough about it that it's uh, yet another dodgy decision, but I don't want to get carried away with that. What I'd like to speak about is the character that we've shown since the 10 men. Uh, you know, I, I was, again, we've, we've, we started okay first five, six minutes, but then we dropped off a, a wee bit, you know, Fort Lauderdale, you know, they're a dangerous side. Uh, there's not a team in this league that, we, that we're good enough to underestimate. So we have to give fair play to Fort Lauderdale that causes one or two problems. The penalty decision, again, uh, it's unfair for me to comment at the moment, but uh, the feedback from the guys up the stair was that it was, uh, in their words, not my words, I don't want to get the belt for this, but it was a disgraceful decision. So uh, I'll need to see that. All right, well, thanks a lot, coach. Thank you. Colin Miller off to the dressing room to give some words of inspiration for his players at half time. Goalless at the half. FC Edmonton against the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. Stay tuned for the score sports update and second half action. Welcome back to Clark Stadium Edmonton. This North American Soccer League matchup between FC Edmonton and the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. Goalless at half time, but FC Edmonton reduced to 10 men after that sending off of Lance Parker, the goalkeeper. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Well, there's the header back towards Parker by Leroy that dropped the goalkeeper in trouble. And not yeah. much choice for the referee. You know, you look at that, you say Dimitrov makes a bad touch there. He takes that well wide of Parker, but you know, it's really tough on the referee. I know, I know Colin says that, uh, that, he think, think, that he said that the players told him they didn't think it was a very good call, but when it's a mistake like that, a defensive mistake that leads to the penalty, John Smith, though, with that huge save, and you saw the reaction there from Daryl Shore. Whenever you throw away a chance like that, it's tough. Second half is coming up. FC Edmonton against the Fort Lauderdale Strikers.
FC Edmonton Soccer on Sportsnet. Brought to you by The Fat Group, building Alberta for more than 50 years. By High Signs, let's light it up. And by Earthwater, the official water of FC Edmonton. Welcome back to Clark Stadium. The players out on the pitch for the beginning of the second half. FC Edmonton with 10 men on the pitch after Lance Parker was shown the red card and he conceded that penalty. But John Smith, who replaced him in goal, his first touch of the ball, he saved a penalty kick. And the score remains goalless as FC Edmonton gets set to kick off this second half, kicking towards the goal to our left, all in white. they are change strips today. FC Edmonton immediately trying to get on the front foot with four dice. Nice little shimmy to the left flank, and here's Lang. Lang's cross uh, tries to bend it away from Atanella, but it's a routine claim for the striker's goalkeeper and an easy rollout for him. Daryl Shaw hoping for a little bit more from his team in this second half. Felt that they played well until the point that they had the man advantage, and then he was a little bit concerned about what the response was at that point, and that's where FC Edmonton got a little bit of a boost. Edward playing the ball over the top this time. Cox can't get to that one. That will run through for Atanella. Yeah, it really felt uh, like it was reversed, the, uh, that Edmonton got the boost when they went down a man and actually picked up their level of play, and I think Colin Miller talked about that, how proud he was of the, of the character and resolve they showed after the call was made. Uh, but, uh, you know, looking at it, whatever whatever way it, it is, if you feel it was a bad call or a good call, I mean, you put under such pressure because, again, the defender makes a mistake in front of the keeper. Port Lauderdale chasing down this right-hand side, trying to get something going. Don't forget, Tuesday night, Canada versus Costa Rica. 8 o'clock kickoff over at Commonwealth Stadium. Just a few yards from here, lots of people in the stadium excited about that one. And we're joined in the commentary position by one of the players, Randy Edwinnie Bonsu. We'll talk to him in just a moment here. And Fort Lauderdale uh, winding down this attack to the left-hand side. Garrett's going to try and cover this one. Still controlling the possession, the strikers, with that man advantage. You would expect that for long periods of the second half. They play this one in low, though, for Dimitrov to chase and he won't get there. Randy, thanks for joining us. How are you feeling about being back in Edmonton and, and playing an international match here? Feels great. Um, I've been playing in front of Edmonton, in Edmonton since 2005, I think. So it's nice to be back home, playing in front of the family and the friends who haven't seen me play so long. It's exciting. Now, I was really excited when I got the call, so I'm looking forward to Tuesday night. And what have you made of watching FC Edmonton so far today? I mean, they're not bad. Like, I came, I came out here last summer as well. The team's a lot better than what it was before. They made some changes. Colin, of course, is she's a great trainer to work with. And I know he's definitely um, had a game plan for them, and they've stuck to it, and that's why they're doing so well. Today's a little shaky. Well, the red card mm -hmm. hasn't helped them much, but I feel like they can still win this game if they, keep, if they stick to the plan. They've had a few chances, and I think it's open game right now. You see that so much in the game, though, when, they, when a team goes down to 10 men, they sometimes become more difficult to play against. Or sometimes when you get a penalty save like that, you get a rise out of that. It seemed like actually Edmonton improved once they went down to 10 men. Yeah, of course. I mean, when their keeper came in, first thing I said, I was sitting beside my goalkeeper. I said, it'd be great for him to save this because then he'll have a great game. Um, and I feel like it lifted the team's performance, too. Good block of the shot on the edge of the penalty area there from Watson and Seiko almost sneaks possession back there. Nurse will take over here. Nurse has played a nice ball down the left channel and Lang's on the end of it. Seiko just inside of him. Seiko into the penalty area, tries the cut back. Was it deflected behind for a corner? Yes, it was. Good quick break down the left flank there from FC Edmonton. Yeah, and Sean Seiko is a, a player you know very well, Randy. I know a lot of the Edmonton guys are very, very close. And I know uh, he's not playing today, but Antonio Rago, another player you're, you know well. Yeah, um, I know Anto very well. So is Sean. Sean has amazing qualities. And so is Anto. Anto has done really well for himself in the last year and a half or so. He's, he's been a true professional. It's unfortunate he's not playing today. I came out here excited to watch him play, but I'm just happy he's still in the team and working hard to still get playing time. But Sean, I feel like he still has a lot more to give to Edmonton, and everyone knows his qualities, and 
he, uh, he's an unbelievable player to play with. I used to love playing with, Sh with Sean every time I make a run, he would find me. He's an unbelievable player. All right, well, best of luck on uh, Tuesday, Randy, against Costa Rica, and I uh, hope to see you on the pitch at Commonwealth. Thank you for having me. Thank Thanks you. for joining us, Randy. It's Randy Edwinnie Bonsu with us uh, in the commentary position. Edmonton player, and he'll be hoping to get a starting job against Costa Rica for Canada on Tuesday. Here we are with Fort Lauderdale, a critical part of this game just after half time, and both teams trying to start bossing it here, and FC Edmonton are winning a lot of those 50-50 uh, battles on the edge of the area, and again, it's Chris Nurse. And, uh, Randy's team got promoted, Eintracht Braunschweig got promoted to the Bundesliga this year. Randy didn't see a lot of playing time. Uh, maybe he'll uh, he'll have to go out and loan or, or look at some options, but uh, was part of a team that uh, got up to the Bundesliga th this year, and that uh, still is, a, is quite an amazing achievement for a, for a young player from Edmonton. And uh, really good chance that maybe he played to St. Ricketts up front uh, in that game Tuesday, and you have two Edmonton strikers starting that game, which would be a, a special thing for a game at Commonwealth. Big week for the game in Edmonton. This week, starting with this one, and a big presence with the Canadian team here. And then, of course, the game on Tuesday. Cox there looking to try and catch the keeper. A little bit unaware, tried the surprise shot. Wasn't a bad effort, got it on target. Just didn't quite work out. Really good first touch there by Michael Cox to get that ball in a good position. Decides to try to catch Jeff Atnell by surprise. No dice there. Maybe would have been better to try to make a step around uh, uh, Antony Ivic because... Uh, uh, one thing that Cox has shown is that when it comes to a, a foot race between the two, he's going to win that every time. That's a shot that's well over John Smith's goal and almost into the fans just queuing up for drinks just behind there, I think it is. Yeah, going to be a goal kick for Smith. Really nice atmosphere here today. A uh, lot of people just, uh, you, you see not all the seats are filled, but there's a lot of people milling about, uh, standing at the rail, uh, standing room areas, finding just places to watch the game, maybe not even from the stands. Uh, feeling, uh, you see just a lot of people mill milling around and just enjoying the atmosphere. And it feels a little bit, uh, this is definitely the best that we've had so far uh, this year. Uh, maybe the best we've had in two years here. And uh, really feeling positive about what's happening here at Edmonton the last couple of weeks. And of course, having the national team play here helps the profile of the game as well. Free kick given against FC Edmonton there. Garrett conceding it. Anthony Avich just rolling that ball forward for Fort Lauderdale in the uh, bright colored boots. Pinero playing it across the back line. Chavez with the pass back there, and Anton Nievich deals with it nicely. Just getting themselves in a little bit of unnecessary trouble there, the strikers, but dealing with it in the end. Chavez bringing this ball out of defense. Nice transition to find Salazar. His pass to the edge of the area, though, not the most precise one. And it's Eddie Edward who will get rid of that one. No one really forward for that, though, and that ball will run all the way through to the Fort Lauderdale goalkeeper. In that case, though, it's safety first. You know you're down a man. Fort Lauderdale's massing up numbers. They have a nice offensive line coming through, have a nice shape as they're attacking, and this is just, uh, you do that to break everything up, make them go and chase that ball back. Well, the last home game for FC Edmonton, of course, the visiting team lost their goalkeeper to a red card, and Edmonton had a man advantage, and in this game, it's the exact opposite, and the Eddie's just looking to feed off scraps with not being able to get much of the ball here, the man advantage, uh, Fort Lauderdale making it pay in the early stages of the second half with possession, certainly anyway. Uh, I think the big difference though was when the Eddies went up a man in the, in a roughly same time in the first half, uh, fairly early in the game, uh, the Eddies had two goals by halftime and actually fairly quickly after the red card, so 
that's the thing. The possession's one part, but you need to, to translate that into to scoring chances, which we haven't seen a lot of in Fort Lauderdale yet. Really, John Smith hasn't been troubled uh, yet this half and hasn't had a lot to do other than catch a few uh, balls and make a couple of goal kicks. And Daryl Shaw talked about the last game his team had a man advantage and didn't do particularly well during normal time in that one either. So uh, he's looking for a lot more in this second half. And that was against a lower division side, you know, a game that probably gave him a lot more trouble than Daryl Shore would have wanted to in a cup match. And, uh, uh, you know, a situation where Fort Lauderdale did play that game for an hour up a man but was forced to go to penalty kicks against a lower division side. And, uh, and this is one of the reasons now is why they're, they're feeling the line they are now. I mean, it took a lot out of them on midweek to play that game. Antonievich again. The FC Edmonton quite content to see Fort Lauderdale in possession in those uh, midfield areas, but fight very hard to win it back when it's closer to the edge of their own penalty area. Guillaume here with a chance to cross from the right wing. It's gone in towards the near post and a diving header and Watson came across and made a brave interception to that one and he's down on the pitch and might need some treatment too. You know I was saying in the early in the in the uh, in the match that Watson just to get that game field needs to get that one tough challenge and maybe I didn't mean to be that tough but does well just comes over the back of the of the attacker uh, but just tough not giving ground there and uh, and 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 really playing his position very well corner kick from the right hand side in comes the cross to the far post it's a gone deep and defended well by FC Edmonton good header away by Nurse again and Cox tries to take that one forward a very difficult job for Cox the lone center forward especially with 10 men and this is the thing too I mean it is a warm day here today uh, much warmer than it has been ever over the last few days the guys have been trained in and uh, you know when you're down with 10 men that early the fatigue starts kicking in too you got to pick your spots good header by Sean Seiko through the middle Cox just couldn't quite get on the end of it and Atanella rolls that one out for Chavez again Daryl Shaw had hinted that he might make some substitutions for Fort Lauderdale and it looks as though He's going to do that. King's getting ready to come on for them. Fresh pair of legs. We're approaching the hour mark in the game and still no goals at Clark Stadium. Yeah, Daryl Shore's got to just find some way to get some players in this game that have a sense of urgency because I'm still not sensing that from the strikers at all, that there's any real urgency in their play. Great layoff by Cox to Lang, who was charging through and was somewhat cynically taken down from behind. That is going to be a card for Guillaume, and it will be yellow. Not much choice for the, for the, the official there. Uh, Lang is by uh, Guillaume here. Wonderful ball played through to him, and uh, he is by. He's got body position, and uh, the kick at the ankles takes him down. And uh, see here, it's interesting. Uh, we have uh, Nurse and Seiko over the free kick. You don't think that Seiko may have a go from here, but you never know. And again, talked a little bit in the first half about the ball. I've talked about it in previous matches as well, but it's something the players have complained quite a bit about this year. The ball is uh, not up to not up to not up to what they like it to be, and they've uh, said that uh, it's hard. It doesn't move as much as they'd like it to. And uh, I know the guys were saying when they played the, the Whitecaps, there was a difference in the game playing with that ball compared to what they're playing with right now. And it's unfortunate, but they, they have to they have to deal with it. And everybody in the league has to deal with the same thing. Sean Seiko over the ball, the club's all-time leading goal scorer. He's going to bend this one into the near post, a flick by Watson. He found his man, just couldn't get the deft flick away there, but uh, it almost did work. Yeah, I was trying to place that nicely in for Albert to try to be the, the first one on to, but just a little bit high, Albert gets underneath that ball and it just pops over uh, harmlessly for Atnella to have a goal kick. And Darnell King is on the pitch replacing Demuhika. 
Yeah, and I think, again, anything that I think that Daryl Shore can do to, to liven up his team, he needs to do. And uh, they certainly don't look like a team that's up a man. And they haven't looked like a team that's been up a man since that penalty kick save. And he needs to, to give that team some urgency. Edge of the penalty area, a strike low against Smith, who gets down well and makes the save. And in fairness, he's not really been troubled that much. I mean, he saved a penalty. But you wouldn't say that Fort Lauderdale created a lot of clear-cut chances since you, he's been on. You could almost argue that that little uh, roller there that he had to, to get down for was maybe the toughest save he's had to make since the penalty. And that's not saying much. And again, it gets back, back to the idea that Fort Lauderdale needs to find some urgency into their game. Just because you're up a man doesn't mean a game is going to be handed to you. It doesn't mean that you're automatically going to score goals. You still have to work. You still have to create space. You still have to make runs. And, and right now, the game is being played, played at a very, very slow pace. And Fort Lauderdale's got to speed things up. They've got to play quicker. They are using a lot of players today that, that, that don't normally play, that are, that are some depth players for them. They, there's no excuse for them not to take more advantage of the situation they have. Cox very dangerous with his back to goal as we saw in the last home game with that acrobatic overhead kick but there again held the ball up well it was a cross come shot from the left hand side but he can be really menacing from those positions. Yeah it's one of those things where you whip that ball across that even if the ball strikes a defender you might get it's hard for a defender to control and sometimes you get that bounce where the ball bounces in front of uh, in front of the in front of the goalkeeper awkwardly because it hits a defender on the hip or in the backside sometimes you get that own goal out of it and uh you know you, you get that break every now and then it's never a bad idea to fire that ball into the box with pace because if you even hit a defender good things can happen seiko trying to thread a through ball for cox it's a beautiful pass and an excellent save by Atanella up against Michael Cox. Nice uh, break there from FC Edmonton and Seiko trying to have a go down the right-hand side this time, looking for the free kick. It's not given. And that's the matchup. You know, you look, you look at the size of Antonievich and you say, what a tall player. But when it comes to speed, there is no contest. Cox can get around him every time. And if, if Seiko can put that slow ball behind Antonievich where he's got to turn around and get and get into a foot race with Michael Cox. You're going to take that matchup every time because it's because Cox is big enough that Antonievich can't just block him out as big as he is. And uh, and Cox has been winning that speed battle. And that's going to be one area of concern for the strikers. Lang does well, working the ball down the left-hand side. Seiko just couldn't get it past his man. It's into touch. Throw in for Fort Lauderdale. Chavez. Across the back line, and Anton Nievich feels for handball. It probably did bounce up off his arm, but the referee not feeling like it was deliberate or that he gained any particular advantage. Looking to switch play this time, and Guillaume's away on the right-hand side. He's got space to oh. look for the cross, and it's not a bad cross to the far post, headed over the top. That's going to be a goal kick for FC Edmonton. I, I actually thought that in that one, there was calls in the box where Guillaume took that ball down the wing and looked to handle that one to settle that one down. And I actually thought if there was a more egregious call of the two, maybe that would have been the one to call because that actually set up a, a scoring chance. But uh, you know, I guess no, no harm, no foul in that case. But uh, it certainly did look like that ball struck his arm. And uh, you see Colin Miller pointing to his arm, pointing to the official and saying, you, you need to make that call there. Cox again holding the ball up on that forward line. Loses possession and Fort Lauderdale with Panero are in a good situation here. Garrett and Edward from the defensive point of view for FC Edmonton shutting down that left channel. Manny Gonzalez to Chavez. Gonzalez to Guillaume. Lang gets a foot in, and there's a potential break for Seiko. Seiko doesn't have much support, except Cox ahead of him, and Lang outside to the left of him. Seiko, short pass to Fordyce. They link up nicely, and it's Garrett on the right-hand side. Good patient build-up for FC Edmonton. Cox is the man he tried to pick out with the cross. It's headed away well, but Lang is charging forward to win that ball back. And he's done it well. Nurse, just the strongest in the challenge there to the edge of the penalty area. Just tried to pick out Seiko. Didn't quite work for him. But FC Edmonton, if anything, looking the 
most dangerous of the two teams here. It's been a good second half with only 10 men. Remember Lance Parker given a red card in the first half and Smith replaced him after Proctor was substituted. There, there's something there for Edmonton. They had Lang going down that side and you saw there when that ball went back out to the outside, Guillaume decided just to shield the ball. He didn't get too aggressive with Lang and that's a player who's on a yellow. Guillaume knows he's on a yellow and a lot of times players know when someone's already been sent off that that second yellow might come a little easier. And that's maybe something that Edmonton can exploit down that side with Lang and Seiko attacking Guillaume who's on that yellow card to see if they can maybe catch him trying to play off players. Pinero from the right hand side gets a good ball in and that's a great save by Dimitrov. Smith denies him again. This time getting down to his right it was a nice height for a goalkeeper with good positional play by Smith. Actually a much better save than his penalty save. Uh, this is actually a much more difficult ball. It's coming across quickly. It's whipped across. Reflexes diving to his diving to his right to get his hands on that excellent save by John Smiths, and uh, that'll only build his teammates' confidence in him. And that really was a more difficult save than the penalty than or, or in the first half. Great save, but Dimitrov's got to be thinking. Uh, he's going to be uh, thinking about John Smiths in his sleep tonight uh, if though this keeps going up because that was actually the best scoring chance of the game for the strikers, and I'm including the penalty kick in that. Approaching the last 25 minutes, nil-nil the score at Clark Stadium in this North American Soccer League matchup. Nurse trying to flick on Smith's clearance, Fordyce winning it. Scrapping for it in there, and he's managed to get the ball to Cox, even though he was on the deck. Cox, nice feet. Wide to the right and Garrett, good crossing chance for the cutback here. Fordyce just over his head, but Seiko with the strike. And it hits the side netting. FC Edmonton playing well with 10 men. Yeah, and that was a chance where Seiko though, has to wait for that ball to bounce, has to wait for that ball to come down. And by then he had real no angle. That was the only way to go outside post. Uh, he, Guillaume and, uh, was, was cutting off his angle toward the net, would have been a block had he hit it that way. So really that was the only angle he had as he has to wait for this cross. A good cross by Garrett, but he's waiting for the bounce, waiting for it to come down. By then you can see Guillaume is right on him. There's no angle at the goal. That's really the only place he can put that ball. It's towards the outside post. And he doesn't have an angle at goal. Seiko on the chest. Clip tap from behind. Wins a free kick against Guillaume. And it looks as though the strikers are preparing to bring on Ali Alberto Hassan. Number 99, and he will replace Dimitrov. Anyone wearing 99 in this city is sacrilege. I'm just going <laughs> to say that right now. Uh, he shouldn't be allowed to wear it. Like he just said, sorry, you're in Edmonton, you're wearing 99. You got you got to wear another jersey. That's just uh, that's really insulting, actually, to the people of Edmonton. They'll be like, no, 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 no one wears that number, not in this city. Well, Hassan's trying his luck with it today. As Lang plays the ball forward into the penalty area, Nurse is chasing it down, but Atinella very quickly out of his goal, reads the play well from the back, a very dependable goalkeeper for Fort Lauderdale. And both goalkeepers, well, all three of them actually, have made very good saves in this game so far, but of course Parker given a red card in that first half, and that's why Smith is in the game to begin with. Edmonton chasing down possession when Fort Lauderdale have it, and it's Guillaume on the edge of the penalty area there, trying to play in Darnell King, and he's tripped as he goes through the defensive area and wins a penalty kick, the second of the match for Fort Lauderdale. Here he goes, he turns around, and Albert Watson, uh, you know, take a look here, he's turning, and uh, throws himself into it. That's a, that's a tough one when you're a defender because you have the, the forward who's leaning into you. He's going to go down no matter what. Uh, this, is, this is something that, you know, you see uh, there's some strikers in the MLS who are very good at it. It's a very professional thing to do. You lean into a defender as you're going forward. The defender either fouls you and you go down or gets out of your way and you go down, but you're leaning into him and you put the defender in a, in a, in a no-win situation. And uh, there are some, some strikers who are really adept at doing this. And, uh, you know, it's a professional thing to do and it puts a defender in an awful situation, puts the referee in an awful situation. And Darnell King does well to actually create a penalty kick. Really 
sometimes you never see that second penalty kick given in the game. And I'm not saying that's a right or a wrong thing, but a lot of times, once the referee's given one, the, the, the level of difficulty to get that second penalty increases. If uh, John Smith gets another save, this would be really something here. Carlos Salazar has stepped up for Fort Lauderdale to try and give his team the lead and break the deadlock. Owen Smith's just beaten on this occasion, but got close to it. Salazar coolly finishing that one. Gives his team a 1-0 lead. For Lauderdale in front. It's a well-taken penalty. Uh, Smith's gets, guess is right, but when you hit it low and right inside the post, on this turf, it's going to pick up speed. And, yeah, Smith's guess is right but just can't get over there in time. Much better taken penalty than Dimitrov's first attempt. Salazar gets it right, does well. 1-0 uh, lead to Fort Lauderdale, and now the pressure's really on the Eddies. And, uh, you know, I have a feeling we might have a pretty angry coach from Colin Miller at, at the uh, end of the match here. An educated guess. Yeah, the players told him they didn't think the first one was a penalty kick. That one I think they might have a stronger case of. But the referee certainly didn't hesitate and was right on the spot and pointed to it immediately when King made that breakthrough just over Albert Watson. To me, to me the, the first penalty, and I know Colin had talked about it at halftime about, about the, uh, what his players had said to him, but to me that was more a penalty than the second one simply because he, the referee's in a bad position where you, you have it set up by your own mistake. It's set up by a, uh, by a terrible defensive error that, that puts Dimitrov in that position where he's grounding the keeper. And that the benefit of the doubt is always going to go to the, the attacking team. In that case, it's, it's a professional play by Darnell King. He's leaning into Watson. He's, he's going to go over no matter what. And uh, it's a play that a lot of experienced strikers do uh, around the world. I've seen it happen. Uh, I think of a similar play uh, that I've seen in many times. I think of Landon, Landon Donovan is one that does this well. I don't use this against him. I don't say that he's a, that, that it's a wrong thing to do. He does this very well, leaning into defenders and putting his shoulder into them where he's going to go down and, or, or they're going to be forced to foul him. FC Edmonton, one goal down. And Seiko playing a direct ball, looking for Cox. On this occasion, can't find him. And you wonder whether Colin Miller's mulling over the possibility of a Fresh pair of legs for his team, playing with 10 men and moving towards the last 15 minutes of the game here. Collins having a fairly animated discussion with the fourth official right now. Uh, they're trying to tell him to calm down, but uh, you can see he's, uh, he's, he's getting his few words in. Fort Lauderdale with a 1-0 lead and looking to play in Darnell King. Closing around the edge of that penalty area again, tackled well by Edward this time. Switch play out to the flank and our seal, but he's tackled by Garrett unfairly, says the referee. Another free kick to the strikers. The players are getting more and more frustrated. The fans are getting more and more frustrated with each foul, whether they're justified or not, just because of the way this game is broken down. And, uh, you know, Fort Lauderdale's finally got that breakthrough. Uh, they, they created a great chance right before that goal. It needs to be said that they did step up, and I do think Darnell King added a heck of a lot to this game. It's a routine claim by Smits, who rolls it out nicely for Lang. And Leroy just taking a touch, but gets blocked by King. And a throw in for FC Edmonton. But a good substitution by Daryl Shore in bringing Darnell King into the game. Someone who's been that catalyst, which is what he was looking for at halftime, what he was talking about. Uh, someone to bring in something, an added dimension to this game. And uh, honestly, if they get three points from this, what a, what a bonus for the strikers to come up on this long, long trip on a game that they had let a lot of players rest. To be able to get three points is, uh, would be a huge achievement for them. Garrett, who's done a lot of running in this game, replaced by Mirabelli player who's uh, 
building his reputation in FC Edmonton, got a nice left foot on him, runs at players, and he's uh, got a chance here in the last 15 minutes. Yeah, and, uh, he, he's, a, he's a player that has that ability to take on one or two defenders, which is what you're going to need in this situation when you're down a man. Uh, and that's it for subs, because they've already burned them with uh, the Carlisle Mitchell uh, going out early in the game. And then the substitution for Smith with Proctor going out. That's the last change chance. King trying to get on the end of a through ball there, but Smith's out very quickly. Strong game for Smith since his introduction. It's a long kick by him forward right to the edge of the penalty area. Dealt with well by Fort Lauderdale, who just poked that one forward. And Leroy gets across and makes the interception. playing this ball forward. Salazar, the goal scorer, looking to play that one in behind Edward. But again, Smith's reading the play calmly. And this is where uh, you'd, you'd never, never advocate it, but this is maybe one of those situations where when a team knows that they've had two penalties called against them in a game, and uh, certainly there'll be a lot of pressure on the referee and I would never advocate cheating in the game, but I'm just saying that uh, they've seen it happen a lot of times where players know and they understand, and I think Fort Lauderdale's got to understand, keep your hands off everybody in the box if Edmonton has any attack, because the referee knows in the back of her head that she's made two calls the other way, that the pressure will be on if there's anything close to a hint of a foul in your area. You have to be careful about that. And Fort Lauderdale's got to be mindful of that, because referees are human beings. And they often think that they, those things do creep in the back of their heads. Pinero on the left-hand side. A nice pass out there to Arcel. Just takes a touch. And there's the left-footed cross that's headed out by Watson. And will be a corner for the strikers. 1-0 to the good against FC Edmonton. Getting close to the last 10 minutes now at Clark Stadium. Taken nicely on the chest on the edge of the penalty area, but the shot's high and wide. It's been a good run by FC Edmonton since that road trip they began the season with. They won twice at home and got a draw at Tampa Bay. This was a game they were hoping to take their third home victory on the trot, but up against it from very early on with that red card to Lance Parker. And that was the first goal they've given up at home this year, so that's, uh, that's a Quite impressive streak that uh, Fort Lauderdale was able to snap there with uh, the goal there on the penalty. Fort Lauderdale currently in last place in the league, but this would do them no harm at all if they could hold on to the situation they've got themselves into here. One nil up against FC Edmonton. And, and, and you have to look at the uh, at the. the the schedule again for Fort Lauderdale and think what an achievement this is with the players they did leave at home and the players that, that they know they're looking forward to another big game in 48 hours with maybe now this entirely different squad of players to come out and get this result is, 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 is a great achievement for the guys here and while it's taking them a long time to get going they, they are getting the job done right now and unless something radically changes in the next uh, 13 minutes plus stoppage time they are going to be able to, to to take three points on what is now I guess the most difficult road trip in NASL now that Puerto Rico's not playing. You see Edmondson getting the ball back they need to get it forward as quickly as possible at this point. Edwards throw flicked on by Fordyce but it drops back to the strikers. Seem to have all kinds of space. Darnell King playing a ball to the edge of the area there. Hassan holding it up and playing it back. Gave Guillaume a little bit more than he would have liked to do there. But they claim possession again, and Pinero looks for that pass to the left flank. And you know, if Edmonton loses this game, you can look at the sort of the perfect storm of events of everything that went wrong today. And it really starts with Carlisle Mitchell and a non-contact play, just crumpling to the ground and being forced to sub off. 
the player that comes on for Carlisle Mitchell is the one that makes the mistake that leads to the goal. I mean, I'm sorry, leads to the red card, which is the in the, in the, in the first penalty that was saved, but sets all that in motion for everything that happened afterwards. So really, the, the first domino is the Carlisle Mitchell injury. Then Leroy comes in on firm as a sub, makes the play that forces Lance Parker to the red card, forces Edmonton 10 men down, and everything happens after that. John Smith's playing the ball up that right-hand side, looks for Fordyce. Just didn't have the legs on it. Back with Smith. This time he does pick out Fordyce, who's got some room on the right-hand side, looks to get it into the middle. Mirabelli gets his first touch here on his weaker right side, but He's able to get support from Nurse, and now Lang on the flank. Lang perhaps looking to force a throw in. Believes it should have been his throw, and he's going to get a yellow card for descent there to the referee. Two thousand three hundred and eighty-seven. The official attendance. At Clark Stadium today, a lot, a lot of frustrated people. I'd say there's probably 2,387 very frustrated people. I don't think there's any strikers that have family members in Edmonton, but uh, I think uh, there's uh, it's a group of fans who are unhappy here and uh, on the touch. Uh, you know, as I said, every, everything, every call, the, the frustration boils. Now you just worry that you just got to keep keep within yourself in a lot of ways and just sort of keep going. And you feel like everything's gone against you today, from injuries to uh, to the cards, to the calls, but you just got to keep going. You have 10 minutes to try to snatch something. This game isn't over yet. They, Edmonton really needs to pick themselves up, needs to, to have one last push. And, and you know, at this point, it doesn't matter. Uh, they need the points. Uh, I think goal difference right now, if they would stay at eight points, isn't, isn't good enough to worry about. So you, you need to go forward. It doesn't matter if you lose by one or two right now. I think uh, you, you need to think about finding a way to get at least a point in the standings today. Edward again from the right back spot. Four guys ahead of him. Dispossessed. The nurse will try and win it back there for FC Edmonton. Does an excellent job as well. Rides two challenges. Plays the forward ball looking for Cox. The pass going a little bit astray. And the strikers back in possession. We're into the last 10 minutes now. It's time ticking away for FC Edmonton. And Edmonton just not even generate anything in that final third. They are winning some balls at midfield. Nurse there did a good job winning the ball, but just not being able to find anything. And it's hard. They, Colin Miller knows he can't make any more changes. This is the group that he's got out there, and he needs them to be the ones to step up. And they look like a very tired bunch right now. Uh, even off a of bye week, they've been chasing the game for so long. Uh, it looks like they're having a hard time finding their legs and, and, and finding, getting this game underneath them. I think that second penalty really took a lot of life out of this team. Smith tries to get them going down this left-hand side. Lang in possession. His forward ball charged down well by King. Well, the substitution for Fort Lauderdale. And Stahl is going to come on for Ramos. Defender coming in, so they add, they, they add to the back line, add a, add a body in the back. They're just going to try to hang on to what they have. Uh, you know, happy with the that they've been able to get the goal. Don't want to be caught on the counter, even with Edmonton down at 10-man. They know they're going to maybe get a final push from the Yetis in the next few minutes and uh, want to make sure. Fort Lauderdale probably remembers here too, last game of last year, the Yetis scored two late goals to come back from two down and get at least a point out of that game. Not often you see a foul throw called at this level of the game, but that's what happened to Lang there. I think, I think foul throws are a lot like uh, traveling in the NBA, where if the referees really wanted to call them, they would call a lot more of them, because they see a lot of them. But uh, it, it's uh, one of those things where a referee decides that, yeah, that one's bad enough. And bad enough that, that it's going to get called. Because generally, if you're on that borderline, the refs let that go. Offside decision given against Fort Lauderdale. Free kick for FC Edmonton. And 
Only about six minutes left for them to try and force an equaliser. A little bit of a skirmish between Leroy and Hassan trying to get in his way to return the ball from the free kick. Here's Mirabelli, nice play on the left-hand side. And running at the defenders, and that's what he brings for FC Edmonton. He's won a throw in, very direct break forward by him. And Lang will be watching himself with this throw in. It's a short throw, but he gets the ball back and then tries the cross from Fadice. Another throw in for the Eddies. This time Lang's gone towards the near post. It might drop for Fordyce in the penalty area here. Chance for Edward to fire the shot. And it's just gone over the top. He just maybe... wouldn't drop down for Fordyce, and then Edward just got a bit too much on it. Yeah, you, you think maybe is that the one chance they're going to get. You had the feeling that maybe they're going to create that one chance against 11 men. Uh, that they're going to find something, find somewhere in the hole, and, and, and Eddie blasts that well over. Uh, you know, leans back as he's shooting and gets uh, gets underneath that ball. But is that the one that that happened? It was well set up by a good run by Mirabelli down the left side, skirting the sideline. That's what he does so well. Great control with the ball with his feet. Just has to work a little bit more on his game in terms of finding uh, teammates and, and, and giving up the ball a little bit more. Uh, but he's, uh, he's close, close to being someone really special. Into the last five minutes at Clark Stadium, the home fans trying to give the home team a lift. Trailing 1-0. Smith has a free kick. on long and headed away by Stahl the substitute out for a throw in flicked on by Fordyce towards Cox back to goal again twists and turns tries to feed Seiko it's scrambled away by Fort Lauderdale Darnell King trying to sidestep Leroy. Leroy does very well and wins the free kick for FC Edmonton. King trying to stop him, advancing forward with the free kick. Bit of a skirmish breaking out there between several of the players. FC Edmonton trying to get the free kick moving quickly and Fort Lauderdale just trying to break up the play here. And again, this is what King did so well in, 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 in earning that penalty. Just getting on the defender, leaning into him, and again, putting that defender in an awkward position. And uh, King does well. He knows, he knows how to, to lunge forward. He knows how to put his body in a situation on the defender uh, and, and put them in a, in, a, in a bad position. And Leroy, frustrated, feeling King on his back, uh, retaliates, and uh, you know, the, the, the card comes out. Free kick given to Fort Lauderdale in the end. Approaching the last two minutes of normal time. Fort Lauderdale just happy to keep possession at this point. Guillaume's free on the right wing. He's given possession to FC Edmonton. Sean Seiko finding Eddie Edward, who lost his footing at a crucial moment. But we'll get another bite of the cherry. We'll have a throw in on the right wing. forward for this free kick approaching the last minute Lang is with it
Watson and Leroy both forward. And a yellow card for the Fort Lauderdale player trying to delay the free kick. Salazar, the goal scorer, not moving back 10 yards quickly enough. Still only about eight or nine yards away. He's, he's creeping up too, so. That's where the football lines come in handy. You can see it's not 10 yards no, even right now. Not, he's definitely not 10 yards. About four or five there as the cross goes into the far post and good clean hands from Jeff Attenella once again. Now by the time that that kick was taken, uh, Salazar was only about four yards away. Um, you, know, you run the risk, that could be a second yellow and that would be a silly way to even things up. But uh, I don't know how much of an advantage that gives you. But uh, yeah, definitely Salazar was playing a game there. And, yeah, we can see with the football lines that uh, definitely was an uh, infringement there on the Fort Lauderdale side, that uh, even on the, the free kick after the yellow card. Mirabelli brought down wins a free kick. This could be FC Edmonton's last chance in this match. Two minutes of added time going to be played. We have played 90 minutes. And the free kick will give them a chance to get players into the box. And give it one last go. Guillaume needs some treatment in the meantime. Maybe another minute or two added to this two minutes of stoppage time. Sean Seiko looks like he's going to take this free kick. Yeah, and you guys... It's Guillaume with uh, coming in late there in Mirabelli. And... Uh, might be in Guillaume's favor that he actually went down, because maybe if he stays up there, that second yellow comes out for him. Uh, it's a little bit of a late challenge, and uh, that, that's always, and uh, he wants to come back in, but I think the referees will make, the, make him sit out, at least for the free kicks in play. We'll let him come back in. Edward, the only defender back for FC Edmonton, and he's midway inside the Fort Lauderdale half, as Seiko puts in the free kick, goes up to the far post. Just gets a bit too much purchase on it. And Salazar, again, was only about five yards away when Sean Seiko takes that free kick. And uh, again, crept up, crept up by the time that ball was struck. And again, as I said, we have that advantage. We have the football lines. I, I can tell you that without, without no doubt that's lock stock, that he was only five yards away when, uh, when that ball was taken. Darnell King trying to work the ball around Edward. Edward stands firm and wins the throw in for FC Edmonton. The dying seconds at Clark Stadium now. Edwards throw up the line. Four dice taken down. Referee sees no infringement there. Kings tackled by a sliding Edwards throw in Fort Lauderdale. seeing the, uh, the slowest corner in history. It's about to come up for uh, Fort Lauderdale. And uh, of course you would do this when you're up, at, uh, up, up in this situation. I wonder if they're gonna take this short and just try to keep this in the corner. Salazar finds Manny Gonzalez and he just holds it in the corner there. And that will be enough for Fort Lauderdale to hang on to all three points in a way victory for them today. FC Edmonton falling at home, losing Lance Parker to a red card. Gave a game effort with the 10 men, but in the end, Fort Lauderdale with a second penalty kick. Smith had saved the first, but not the second. And the final score, FC Edmonton nil, Fort Lauderdale won. Being Real, real blow here to Edmonton's future in terms of looking at the spring season. They needed to stay with that pack. Now they're looking at five points.